Hello, everyone. I mentioned on Twitter today that I got a piece of information regarding Pro Tour New York 98, namely that Oliver Krebs lost in round eight to an unknown opponent. So on my big spreadsheet here, this cell should have an L in it. Um, I want to show you what that does to draft pod number three on day two and lead you through some of the deductions that I've been making to try to fill in this data that is missing. So as you may have seen if you uh, read my blog post on the deal on the ELO project, uh, we are missing all of day two of Pro Tour New York 98. So if I scroll backwards, we can see all of day one over here. All of the pairings exist. It's not really true. I didn't have round four, but I built it from the tiebreaker, so that was fine. But day two, less so. <laughs> I've been trying to um, scrounge information about this day to maybe restore this before the Planeswalker Point database, the DCI database, goes down on May 27th. So you can see that the date of recording of this video is the 14th. <laughs> We've got 13 days left, and I'm scrounging for any piece of information that I can get. Part of why I'm looking for this information, if I can get the pairings in good enough shape that I can post the tournament on the ELO project, I'd love to do that. But at least I want to get the final standings. So I've been trying to work through the final standings as best I can, and I have some tricks for accomplishing that. So for instance, um, I got Planeswalker Point information from Sven Gertsen, and I also um, have a report from Dave Price. And both of them say that they finished on 27 match points. So that means that everyone in between must have also been a 27. So I can use tricks like that in order to figure out uh, information about the number of match points that people have. But this only gets me so far. Once we reach the 64 line, someone in a report mentioned that Bill Macy finished 65th. Um, that's the cut. That's the ordered, the ordered finish was only given for the top 64. Those are the people who cashed. And so spots 65 through 96 are missing. So I don't know how many match points they had. I don't know their relative order of finish, anything like that. This is the only block of people from any pro tour where that information is not known. And it would be a real satisfying thing if I could rebuild at least that much. Okay, having said all that, I'm supposed to be talking about pod three. So let me show you, I said all of day one existed. Here's the standings after round seven. And if you think about how draft pods are broken up by you know every consecutive eight people in the standings, then we should have one through eight in pod one, nine through 16 in pod two, and now 17 through 24 will be in pod three. I'm gonna go ahead and filter the table so that we're only looking at um, the matches for, or the players. <laughs> There's not very many matches here um, in this pod. So there are three people in this pod for which I've gotten Planeswalker Point information. I got Olerod a while ago, Kyle Rose not that long ago, and Oliver Krebs just now. And I can show you, for instance, here's Ola. So he very graciously, and I should have said this already, that everyone who has helped me so far, it is really moving, um, the response that I've gotten from people that are helping me out, helping me reach people who are then helping me out. Um, I'm very fortunate to be doing this in a community that's so interested in having this history preserved. So you can see that not very many names are here on uh, Ola's day two list. And he mentions that from memory, he thinks the loss in round eight was against Casey McCarroll. So I'm gonna take his word for it and go ahead and put that in right now. Uh, in blue as eh, slightly speculative. But if he remembers that he lost to Casey McCarroll, then there's only two losses that aren't accounted for, right? And only one of them is on day two. And also, this is the only one of the four draft pods that Ola is in that also had Casey McCarroll in it. So uh, it's reasonable to assume that he's telling the truth here or that his memory is correct. Um, okay, so that was this. Then for Krebs, we learned a match against Kyle Rose and a match against Olerad. These two people, it, it's pretty unfortunate that the three people that I have happen to play each other twice. Like, this could have gone a little bit better for me in terms of what matches were and weren't preserved. But okay, this is what we've got. So let's see what we can do with it. The other place where I'm drawing information, and I'm able to do that because this is pod three, which is near the top of the standings, is a series of posts on Usenet 
which were archived by Google Groups. So there's one for round 10 where this person whose name is Mike, well, thank you very much for this, Mike. I don't know if you realized how carefully I would be uh, scrutinizing your posts 22 years later, but here I am. Um, there's one for round 12 where Mike gives everyone who's tied at 25 match points after 12 rounds. There are ones for the other rounds as well, but they don't have standings in them, which is like kind of frustrating. They do have like feature matches, so I was able to get a couple of matches out of this. And there is some information. Um, like here's him saying that after round 11, um, there are eight people. It would have been a clean cut to top eight. There are eight people with 25 match points at that point. Um, which is going to become useful in a second. So these are the, like, you know, balled up tissues that have little scraps of ballpoint pen on them that I'm trying to fit back together again to form the whole jigsaw puzzle. And you'll notice in um, the spreadsheet that a lot of these different cells have information that's, like, squirreled away. This is my, like, post-it notes on the wall with a bunch of string connecting them. Um, this is all information that I've been able to glean either from the Usenet posts or people's reports or stuff that I could infer from uh, other people's Planeswalker point information. Okay, so let's see how much we can fill in. There's one thing that I haven't written in that we actually kind of were allowed to know ahead of time. Let's look back at the uh, list of people in this draft pod. Notice something about the match points. There are two people, Arho, Toika, and Jess Means, who entered this draft pod on 18 points, and everyone else entered on 16. So I've recorded the match point information here, two 18s, and then the rest are 16s. Those two people had to play each other. So this is against Jess Means, and this is against uh, Toika Arho, though we don't know who uh, won or lost. We'll have to worry about that in a second. But at least those two people were paired. We also know that Krebs lost. And I can fill in the, the other information from the Planeswalker Point uh, data that people gave me. So this should be loss, win, win, loss. Krebs was loss, loss, win, win. And Kyle Rose is loss, win, loss, win. Working on this pod also, um, there's something satisfying about how far we're going to get because David Bachman is no longer with us. So um, we're not going to be able to get his information. So the more that we can fill in indirectly about him would be nice. So this is where we are at the moment. Um, let's think for a second about round eight. You notice something about this. We have four losses accounted for. I mean, I guess maybe Jess and Arho could draw. We're going to rule that out in a minute, but maybe Jess and Arho could draw. But there's not going to be a fourth loss elsewhere. So that means that everyone else that isn't accounted for must win. That's something. Um, Next piece of information, so let me show you uh, something that we learned from round 10's standings, namely that Casey McCarroll had 25 match points at this point. So he came in on 16, and after round 10 is at 25, so that's a plus 9. He has to go win, win, win. The autocomplete gets me. Um, and for reasons involving this stuff later, so all of the other pods over here for the last half of day two, um, I've done similar deductions for, and we're just going to take me at my word on these. But I guess I can show you that in round 11, we have a break at 25 points. These are the people that would have made the top eight, and Casey McCarroll's name is there, and David Bachman's name is there. They have 25 so if we already knew that Casey had 25 as of round 10, then he must have lost here. And for that matter, we also know now, this is where the, the, these 25 numbers came from. I was able to work it out from that. So David also has to go 3-1 and one in this pod. So we'll come back to that thought in a second, because now let's look at round 10. We have four wins uh, accounted for, so there must be all the rest losses. And that means that David has to win the other rounds because he was on 25 match points after round 11. So that looks like that. Now let's look at round nine, <laughs> where we have three, four wins accounted for, so there must be all losses otherwise. And the autocomplete gets me. The autocomplete is funny because it shows me things in between, right? Like Jess means this is row 37, and Scott Reinfeld, this is uh, row 77. So I'm getting an autocomplete in between the two <laughs> based on how Google Sheets works. 
out here, I know uh, three wins, two losses, but there's still three left that we have to figure out. Okay, there's one more piece of uh, information that we can figure out from Usenet, and then I think we're kind of on our own, and that has to do with Arho. So Arho is on 24 match points after round 10. Um, if he's on 24 after round 10, and we have a loss already accounted for, he has to go 18 up to 24, he needs two wins. So that only happens if he beats Jess. So we can go ahead and mark this one as a win here, and this is a loss to Arho. Then let's look at round 12 where um, everyone who is at 25 or above is mentioned, and guess who's not here? That would be Arho. So Arho has to actually then lose-lose so that he doesn't have 25 match points over here in round 12. That means that the bottom two pair, uh, people here are a win and a loss, and at the moment we don't know which. Um, I guess I should say that if you believe what happens next, and by that I mean like what happens in rounds 12, 13, 14, then we can actually fill this in right now. So um, I know that... Um, everyone that was in pod six had 21 or 22 match points. Based on the final standings, Jess has 27 at the end. I was able to fill in all the pairings for pod six, and I found two wins and a loss. So the only way that that would all make sense is if Jess came in on 21, which is reasonable. Um, and then if we work our way backwards, he was on 18 at the end of day one. We need one more win to get him up to 21. It must be here. So then that means that uh, Reinfeld must have a loss, and that means that at the end of this first draft pod, Scott was on 19 match points. This is actually news to me. I haven't, I just got this number as I'm recording this. I'll have to go back and see if I can figure out what draft pod he might have been in, given that he had 19 match points. That might help me down the line. Who knows? Right now we have a grid of W's and L's, and there is no information about who any of the opponents are. Let's see if we can do something about that. So in order to do that, we need to try to simulate the pairings, and for that I need to keep track of uh, the number of match points that everyone has throughout this draft pod. So we used that information, for instance, when we said that Arho and Jess had to play in round 8. So I'm going to go ahead and annotate this right now. So coming into this round, it was Arho and Jess on 18. Then it was David Bachman, Casey McCarroll, Olerod, Oliver Krebs, Kyle Rose, and Scott Reinfeld all on 16. So there is an 18-18 pairing. The winner went to 21. That was apparently Arho. The loser is on 18. That was Jess. And then we have a bunch of 19s and we have a bunch of 16s. So these are the three winners and the three losers of these lower matches. So Let's now fill in some of that information. The three winners were Bachman, McCarroll, what? McCarroll, Casey McCarroll, and um, Holerod. Not true. Scott Reinfeld. <laughs> we got it. On the other side was Holerod, Oliver Krebs, and Kyle Rose. So now I know that Rose and Krebs play. It should be Arho against one of the 19s, and at the moment we don't know which one, but one of these three people. The other two, so like maybe Arho plays against Casey, and then we would have David playing against Scott. Jess has to play Ola. Like that's the way the pairings are going to shake out. So this is a loss to Ola, and this is a win over Jess Means. So these are accounted for, and I guess I can say that we've got Ola, Casey, Jess, and Arho. Those are accounted for. Uh, we don't know what's going on with these four people, and we don't know what's going on with these four people yet. So if I move forward to the next round, then here's what I see. Casey and David are both win-win. So they went from 16 to 22. So we have Casey McCarroll, David Bachman, both on 22. Then I have Arho Toika on 21. The loser of this match is going to be on 19. So let's see if I can figure out who's the other, like who are the people on 19 here? Scott. But then also Ola 1 to get up to 19. And uh, Kyle Rose one to get up to 19. So I'm just looking at rounds eight and nine at this point. 
and adding that to 16 or 18 is appropriate. So Kyle Rose is now on 18, just lost, and is on 18, and um, the last person in the pod is Krebs, who is still on 16. So based on this, Casey should play David. Those are the top two. There's a but. The but is, what if Casey played David in round nine? Then they would not be eligible to play in round 10. However, let's think that through. Suppose that Casey played David already, so they can't play each other here. Somebody has to play Arho. It would either be Casey or David. Like one of them would get that pair down and the other one would get like a 22-19 a pair down. I know Arho's opponent. Thanks to Kyle Rose who gave me his uh, history. Actually, really thanks to Arho. I should say Arho is out there somewhere and he has logged in in the last couple of years. So his name does appear in uh, people's histories. So thumbs up to that. It would be nice if I could find you to figure out your other opponents. But um, thank you for locking in at some point. So the fact that Arho is already accounted for means that there was no pair down, so Casey and David have to play here. So Casey and David play at this point, and we know that Casey wins. Okay, so that was this. Now I know that um, Kyle, Rose, and Arho play. So if we look at what's left over, it should be just means against Oliver Krebs, and there's no problem there because um, Jess and Krebs haven't played already, and they in fact cannot have played already. They both went loss loss. So um, this is means Jess. This is Krebs Oliver, and the last pairing is Scott against Olerod and Owens. Reinfeld Scott and Radola. Okay, now we go on to round eleven. So in round eleven. We know Casey was on 25 and stays on 25. Oh, I guess I'm supposed to be doing this uh, based on what happened after round 10. So Casey won this match and went to 25. David lost this match and is on 22. Arho won his match and went to 24. Um, Ola won to go to 22. Scott lost and is still on 19. Krebs won and is on 19 as well. So I guess let's just go ahead and fill that in. So Krebs won. Scott lost and stayed on 19. Jess is on 18. And the last person in the pot is Kyle Rose. And Kyle lost to Arho, so he's on 19 as well. And this time we get to start by knowing that Krebs and Ola played in a goofy pair down. So that's interesting information. Let's think about that for a minute. Again, the obvious first pairing would be to send Casey and Arho to play each other. However, that's not what happens. You see why that's not what happens. Both Casey and Arho have lost. So they did not play each other. Okay, now let's try to run that back. Why didn't Casey and Arho play each other? It must be because they had already played. And so then the pairings were not allowed to pair them. So that is possible. They could have played right here. So I think we can deduce from the fact that they both lost in round 11 that they actually played each other in round 9. And in that confrontation, Casey won. Well, Casey did not play himself, though. Toy Garho. And this is McCarroll Casey. And now based on that, the last two people in this round are Bachman and Reinfeld. And Bachman wins. Okay, so now we have to ask the question, who did Casey play? <laughs> um, he didn't play Arho. He didn't play David, because they played already as well. Casey and David played in round 10. So now he didn't play Olerod, because Ola's already accounted for. He must have played someone on 19. So we're down to Scott and uh, Kyle. He didn't play Scott, because they both lost. So he must have played Kyle Rose. That's the only pairing that actually is consistent with the rest of the data that we have. So this was a loss to Rose-Kyle, and Kyle stole away the draft trophy. He actually just incinerated a draft trophy here, right? Because no one went 4-0 in this pod. It wasn't like he got it for himself. 
Okay, then uh, there's no other impediments to lining up the pairings the way that you would expect. So um, Arho and uh, Bachman play. So Toika Arho here and Bachman David like that. And then the last group is Jess Means finally getting on the board in this pod beating um, Reinfeld Scott. Okay, well now there's only two pairings left. We have to assign either David and Scott, the two winners, they play either Krebs or uh, Rose. And here's the sad news. I don't think that we have the information to figure this out. Um, it would be nice if we could do it by like seeing whether or not two people cross paths later, like we did to deduce that um, Casey and Arho didn't play. Like if Scott wound up playing David in round 10, or sorry, if Scott wound up playing, let's say, Kyle Rose in round 10, then um, you wouldn't have played him in round eight. But that's not the case. There's no uh, way to distinguish based on the further pairings as to who played whom. Now, when I realized this, I was sad. Then I got excited because I do have tiebreakers. So maybe I could use, like, for instance, David Bachman's tiebreaker. Because David Bachman's tiebreaker at this point would include his round eight opponent. And I could use that to decide whether or not it was Rose or Krebs. But it actually doesn't work. And the reason why it doesn't work is because it's the round 10 tiebreaker and not the round nine tiebreaker. So in round 10, both Rose and Krebs have gone one and two in this pod. And so they are both at um, 19 match points. And so because of that, either one of them will show up in David's as like a 19 out of 30. So they have the same signature as far as opponent's match win percentage is concerned. Then I thought, well, maybe I could use the round 12 tiebreakers because like I have David's tiebreaker here as well. Um, but that doesn't work either because um, they both win this round. So they both will show up as a 25 in that tiebreaker. Then I actually also have the top eight tiebreakers at the very end. So his final, final tiebreaker is 62.93. But Kyle and Oliver are both on 28 match points there. So they have the same signature at every snapshot where I have the tiebreakers. And so because of that, I can't actually tell them apart. So as far as I know, I don't have any way to figure this out. I've already gotten... Um, Planeswalker point information from both Krebs and Rose. They didn't have opponents in them. Um, that's consistent with it being David because, uh, unfortunately, David has passed. So he's not around to log in and populate his name throughout the system. So the only hope is for Scott Reinfeld to um, cross paths with me, and then I can ask him. So then I went back to my contact list to see if I have any idea how to reach Scott Reinfeld, and he is one of the undecorated uh, total unknowns to me at the moment, which is pretty frustrating. So this is as far as we can get at the moment. We did go from nothing to a lot. So there's that. We actually completely filled in um, all of the opponents for four people, which is pretty cool. And I think it goes to show how just having a little bit of information from a lot of different people can be used to recover all of the standings, or sorry, all of the pairings. With that said, you can see the list of people that I'm still looking for, especially the purple people are ones that I know are out there. I've tried to contact them, but I haven't heard a response yet. Um, the black people, I don't even know how to get in touch with. I guess Casey's off the hook, right? If you know how to reach any of these people, um, then there's a chance that I'll be able to put together the next video with more cool deductions based on the stuff that I've seen so far. Um, please send them my way. Cheers, all.